three on this program. We know you will enjoy finding out why we think the Carolina Connection in jazz is fascinating and needs to be studied and enjoyed. The subject of this program is North Carolina native Helen Morgan, wife of jazz legend Lee Morgan, whom she murdered in 1972. Helen Morgan was born in 1926 in Brunswick County. You were in the world, but she never got out. I mean, she smoked marijuana and drank and this kind of thing. But she was just fascinated by people who were in the drugs. She, just, she, said, she, she said, Larry, it just fascinated me why a person would pawn their coat and walk around in 20 and 10 degree weather to get a bag of dope. She said that fascinated her. And she, she had this big heart and sympathy for people who were downtrodden, bums and alcoholics and whiners. She would bring them into her home, they had anywhere to stay, and feed them and clean them up. She just had that kind of, you know, vibe of mine. You know, so I could see her reaching a point where she could shoot somebody. I could see that happen. He was in the club when she got that just before intermission. He was in a club. He finally got up, you know, she went over and talked to him. And he was sitting down, he was actually sitting at the table with his girlfriend. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Right? So she <laughs> says, so he, went over, he went over to him and started talking to him. Right? So the girl said, what are you doing talking to her? I thought you, you split up with her. And so she said, Lee said, and pardon me ladies, I'm not with this bitch. Woo. Oh. Damn. I'm just trying to tell her to leave me alone. It's on the tape. It's on the tape. So, so um, she said at that time, she slapped him. So he pushed her and put her out of the coat. In the coat. Without a coat. She took her coat and the bags and threw it out. Put her out of the coat. She told her to bounce and not let her back in. She said that when she got off the ground, the bag had opened up, had opened up, and the gun accidentally, <laughs> accidentally on purpose, I guess. Accidentally. Right. So she said she picked the gun up and walked toward the door, and the bouncer saw her coming in, and the bouncer said, uh, "Miss Morgan, I hate to tell you this, but we told me not to let you back in there." She showed him the gun. She said, "Well, I'm coming in." <laughs> and he said, "Yes, you are." <laughs> He let her in, and, and so when she said she walked in, she saw him coming at her. And he was in such a rage that she said she just pulled the tree. And that's how that happened. And she said she went into hysterics. You got a question? So was, he was she has a question. But. So when, when she did that, wasn't it in front of other people? Yes. Wasn't it mm-hmm. yes. right there? Yes. So wouldn't that be considered premeditated? No, no. Well, if, if, well, I don't know. Well, 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 I talk about that in the last chapter. I talk about if it was first degree murder, then she, that would mean that she had intentions oh, of killing him. But I think you could look at it. She was provoked right. into doing that. Yes. I, I guess that's the legal out, legal aspect. Of it. Well, they don't care nothing about black people. No, it's, it's just another. Sure they didn't just another black person that was killed. You know. Now that could be. Especially she knew people and. Right. But she told me once she shot him, the club cleared and people just vanished and went everywhere. You know, and she said it was hysteric. She went into hysterics, right? And that article mentions all of that. Now, it's just kind of interesting to me that people are really getting interested in this, especially in the, well, I can talk about white people, but they're getting interested in this and they're using my stuff, you know, publishing my my stuff. That's how they do it, yeah, right there. Yeah, they study us. Yeah, so they take it, but they think it's a fascinating story, <laughs> right? It's, it's one of those kind of stories that people want to know about, but they don't want to know about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, okay, so she killed him, she's a dog. We don't want to know why she killed him or what led up to that point. You understand? We don't want to know that. We, we just know that she's a dog and she killed the great Nemo. That's what this, this whole thing boils down.
great Umar when he was about to go on his great career and she could. And there's another element to this too that people don't talk about. Lee Morgan was a black nationalist. He had started an organization, a part of an organization, Rashawn Roller Kirk was a part of this organization, I think it was called Black Musicians and Political Something. But they had actually interrupted Dick Cabot's show, these talk shows, and they would just interrupt the show. And said, you need to hire more jazz, we need to hire more musicians, black musicians in this, in this, uh, on this show. That kind of thing. I think that's one of the reasons why we don't hear a lot about you. We heard the North Carolina announcer. What's the name, my brother? Larry Renee Thomas. Larry Thomas. Had a book. I imagine y'all saw y'all seen it already on YouTube and, and other places about Lee Morgan. You know, I, I was listening to what you were saying is that Miss Morgan really had like sort of like an MBA degree in, 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 in managing him. Well, I was very impressed with the fact that she was able to rescue his career but not only handle his bookings, she also handled the plane tickets, she handled the accommodations in the whole nine yards. Because that, that was very impressive to me because she had a, less than a high school education at that time. Well, I show you that time, you don't have to go to have an MBA degree and pay back college loans right. to, to get ahead. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's one of the things that really impressed me about her. How did she, you met her at um at, at your one your classes right? Yes, I did. I met her at Shaw University, what's called Shaw University Cape, which is a center for alternative programs and education. It's a part of Shaw University, which is an African American, basically predominantly African American school in Raleigh, North Carolina. But they have different satellites all over the state. I met her in around 1990 in Wilmington, North Carolina. One of my students. Well, I was one of your students, huh? Yes. How you know one of your students gonna give you the hottest story out, huh? I'm a, it just fell in my lap, brother. <laughs> I had no way of knowing that it was gonna happen, but when I found out who she was, I knew we had to document it. That that had to be documented. Historical significance. I I I, 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 I agree. It had to be documented because you said that because you had a lot of jazz musicians and a lot of fans there. They're on you, right? Yeah, for the most part, but I... Uh, they'll blow over. Yeah, they'll blow over, you know, once they realize that, you know, it's Brother. just history. That's okay, what it is. so call me. And we must Stop accept not. history as it is. You know, it's either going to be her side, somebody else's side, and usually the truth is somewhere in the middle. That's how history works. There's always a gray area. Yes, it There's is. There's no black and white. Yes. So, I, like, people ask me, whose side am I on? I'm not on her side. That's, that's the whole thing. Yeah, you were mentioning talking. They, yes. they said you you are on her side, but she came to you with the story. That's right. Right, brother. You're right. I'm not on her side. I'm not on his side. You're recording history. Yes, sir. That's right. That's what I was trained to do. I'm a historian. You know? And I, I understand people who are strongly in love with Lee. I understand people who are strongly in love with her. But that's not why I wrote a book, and that's why, not why I wrote the article. I wrote the article to disseminate information. Because also, too, needed information. because back in 72, when this story came out, you know how the media is. Yes. So I'm glad that you came forward, you know, she came forward with you about, you know, what, what really happened. Because the media, you know, right. you know they, they won't, they won't she, tell well, it. Well, they call her Helen Moore. Yes. And no one seemed to know where that came from. She certainly didn't call herself that in my class. So that will show you right now, or right then, that there's something wrong with this story. If she was given the wrong name, first of all. She's known as Helen Moore, M-O-R-E, or M-O-O-R-E. But she never called herself that. She called herself Helen Morgan. The question of, you know, we won't go too much into detail. She uh, had a, she was, Charged with a lesser charge, right? Yes. What, what's the system? Involuntary manslaughter. Okay. Yes. She, well, she was arrested uh, February 19, 1972. She stayed in, in, I think, Rikers Island for about two months. Okay. Until around May. She was bailed out. Then she went to trial uh, in 1973. Okay. And she was cut loose. That was it. The voluntary man, so she never went back to jail. 
that went right to jail. Yeah. My understanding is that she also spent some time in the mental institute. Oh. What happened was probably when she was incarcerated, probably some psychiatrists looked at her. Yes. And checked her out. That's what probably happened. You think that, you know, she mentioned her listeners as a tape, we listen to the tape. You think that she probably, during that time, you know, sometimes, you know, you invest in a, a lot of people, and sometimes, you know, you feel you invest a lot of people, and sometimes they sort of like turn on you. Maybe, right. maybe that's, you think so? Uh, I don't know. I think he was just having fun. I don't know if he necessarily turned on her, but. Oh, you mean t her turning on him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, she just thought she was treated very badly. Like Frankie and Johnny. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. He, and it, plus, he was, Lee was much younger than she was. Mm -hmm. So he started dating a younger younger woman. She was much older than he was. Well, you, I was listening when I was just coming outside. You said about possession of... Yes. She, that's the first thing she said to me when I interviewed her. Did she consider Lee her possession or did she love him? And I said, well, did you? And she said she didn't know. Now, after all those years, she hadn't realized yet whether she loved him or she wanted to possess him. Rolling into the present, what's what's happening with you concerning this book? <laughs> well, a lot of things are really happening. I'm, I'm getting more ink, as they say in the, in the media. There's an article in this much Jazz Times, September Jazz Times, that includes my book. There is also uh, an online site, online, uh, I guess it's an online site, yeah, internet site called Narratively. They called me and they, they talked about the murder. So the murder of Lee Morgan has always been a, an interesting it's, story. It's intriguing, you it's know. It's intriguing story. Everybody wants to know about it, but they don't want to know about what led up to it. Yeah. Or what what Helen was thinking about at that time? But he I'm was, the only one who has that information. But he was a promising musician coming. Oh, yeah. As they say, he was a promising musician coming yes. up, right? Yes. No question about it. He was a rising zenith star in the jazz world, and that's why most of the jazz musicians resent the fact that I have written that. You got a lot of jazz fans that resent it too. The jazz fans too. Probably more jazz fans. But but there's a young lady that's sitting in the bookstore now. Yes. She is a serious Lee Morgan fan, and she understands what I'm doing. So there are some exceptions. I'm thankful for that. Movie's coming out too on the two, right? Yeah, but we don't want to talk about that too much. The, no, movie, no. the movie's going to come oh, out soon. Okay. A documentary movie. That's good. By a Swedish filmmaker. Okay. So we could we look forward to that, and uh, I hope to come back on your show to talk about that. I would love you too. I'll be more than happy. I love. I want to thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And. What's that name again? Larry Thomas. Larry, Larry Thomas. Larry Renee Thomas. From, from what's, what's the name that's in North Carolina? North Kakilaki, brother. North Kakilaki. <laughs> and, and people who watch it on, 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 on YouTube yeah. down there in North Kakilaki, you. No, the home of John Coltrane. Okay. Thelonious Monk, Max Roach, Nina Simone, and countless others. Briefly, you said that you're planning to do something, uh, put a yes. book together about yes. on the Carolina, the North Carolina Jazz Connection. And then Mac I got it Roche. together. I just need to need, need to fill in it. Okay. Fill it in, but I've already started an outline for it. My next book is coming out soon. The North Carolina, fascinating North Carolina Jazz Connection. Larry Thomas, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, brother. For, and um, for joining us on the Element Extra Extra. I thank sisters for getting you up here too. Well, I thank her too. I love her. This is, a, this is like an oasis in the middle of Briefly, the Briefly, you say you had a bookstore one time, right? I did. I had a bookstore in Wilmington, North Carolina doing, in 1992, in 1993, called Roots Cultural Store. So I know what she's uh, experiencing. It's a you wonderful, think, wholesome experience. And, and you think books are, uh, books are the key, oh, right? No question about it. No, no, Not why, playing. Why were, they, why, were they, why were they doing, quote unquote, slavery time? Ban the slave right. from reading. And you know the strange, strange thing. There was a law against that. Right. There was a law against this, and now you give them a chance. They don't want to read. Well, no, that's another story in the That's right. Some do, don't you be. Some folks do, and some folks don't. Don't you be the kind that won't. Right. <laughs> Larry Thomas, thank you so thank much. Thank you, brother. You welcome. Thank you so much. And this is Letty from the LMS Extra Extra Show at Sisters, and Larry Thomas. A lady who shot Lee Morgan. Take care and see you soon.